Would a leader value a nation's interests more than his wife's requests? The Guinea president, married to a French lady, now faces a hard time as France's influence on the nation is increasing. However, the president finds himself completely helpless. Either his wife's requests force him to align with France or his past, which no one knows, is responsible. But whatever it is, the leader is under extreme pressure. And while he can't talk openly about it, he is giving signals. Africa, ladies and gentlemen, is suffering from a governance model that has been imposed on it. The question is, will anyone help him save his country from France's control? But what if he is, in fact, a puppet? Today, the African people are more awake than ever and more than ever determined to take their destiny into their own hands. Let's find out. In West African politics, nations like Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso often dominate the conversation, overshadowing Guinea's president, Colonel Mamadi Doumbouya. Yet recent developments have thrust him into the limelight, exposing his intricate connections with France and raising pertinent questions about his leadership. But before talking about what type of relations Guinea has with France, let's first address why Guinea and its president are never a topic of debate. And yes, it is relevant. Maybe because it was not given any attention, Guinea decided to align with France ethically or unethically. So, let's talk about what factors contribute to the disparity in attention given to Guinea's president Mamadi Doumbouya compared to leaders in neighboring countries like Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso. The disparity in attention given to Guinea's president Mamadi Doumbouya compared to leaders in neighboring countries like Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso can be attributed to several factors. First, Guinea's geopolitical interests differ from those of its neighbors. While Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso might be situated in regions of strategic importance or face specific geopolitical challenges, Guinea's position is not drawing as much international focus. Historical events and relationships play a significant role in shaping international perceptions. Guinea's history, including its colonial past and post-independence developments, does not generate the same level of interest or attention as the histories of other Sahel countries. Its leader has not talked enough about the pain locals went through, making people forget about it. Then, the regional dynamics within West Africa can vary, impacting the attention given to each country's leadership. Guinea's role and influence within regional organizations or alliances differ from those of Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso, affecting its visibility on the international stage. Then comes the question of whether Guinea's stability and the nature of its transition to military-led governance following a coup in 2021 differ from those in neighboring countries. If Guinea is perceived as relatively stable compared to its neighbors, it will attract less attention from the international community. This is because, unlike other nations, Guinea never resisted the West's intervention, making it impossible for anyone to discuss it. This all translates to less media coverage. The level of media coverage and reporting on Guinea's political developments also contributes to the disparity in attention. If international media outlets prioritize coverage of events in other Sahel countries, Guinea's leadership might be overlooked or receive less scrutiny. Also, the perceived threats or challenges posed by Guinea's leadership to Western interests may differ from those posed by leaders in neighboring countries. If Guinea is viewed as less of a threat or less influential in regional dynamics, it may receive less attention from Western powers. So, is joining France a way to become the topic of discussion? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. Guinea's external relations, particularly with major international actors like France, can influence its visibility on the global stage. If Guinea maintains closer ties or alignment with certain countries or organizations, it may receive less scrutiny or attention from others. But is it ethical? Maybe this will get Guinea into talks. But soon, when people realize that Guinea did nothing but accept French influence, they will forget about it. Here the question arises, why is Guinea so different while all African nations fight to end Western control? Why has it accepted French control? Guinea's relationship with France has deep historical roots, dating back to colonial rule and subsequent independence. 
Unlike other African nations that achieved independence through protracted struggles and resistance against colonial powers, Guinea's path to independence under Sekou Touré in 1958 was marked by a decisive rejection of French colonial rule. However, Guinea's subsequent ties with France were shaped by post-colonial dynamics, including economic dependencies and diplomatic relations. Guinea's economy has historically been intertwined with French interests, particularly in mining and natural resources. French companies invest significantly in Guinea's extractive industries, including bauxite, iron ore, and gold. These economic ties create dependencies and incentives for cooperation between Guinea and France and potential leverage for French influence over Guinea's policies and governance. Guinea's security cooperation with France, particularly in counterterrorism efforts and regional stability, has been a key aspect of their relationship. Guinea's participation in security partnerships and military cooperation with France may be driven by shared security interests and the need for external support in addressing regional security challenges such as terrorism, transnational crime, and border security. Guinea's acceptance of French influence may also reflect diplomatic pragmatism and the realities of international relations. While striving for greater autonomy and sovereignty, Guinea may recognize the benefits of maintaining diplomatic relations with France, a major global power with influence in regional and international affairs. Balancing national interests with diplomatic engagements is a common strategy for many nations, including those in Africa. Mamadi Doumbouya's leadership style and strategic choices, as well as those of his predecessors, play a significant role in shaping Guinea's relationship with France. Dumbuya's background as a former French legionnaire and his marriage to a French national may influence his perspective on Guinea's ties with France and his approach to diplomatic relations. Internal political dynamics and power struggles within Guinea's leadership also impact the country's foreign policy decisions. The leaders have never been so resistant to France, so they still accept France's control. Let's discuss the leadership in detail now because what's coming next will shock you. Colonel Dumbuya ascended to power in Guinea through a military coup in 2021, yet his leadership hasn't garnered as much attention as his regional counterparts. While neighboring countries have openly opposed French intervention, Guinea quietly resumed military cooperation with France, particularly along its border with Mali. So, what distinguishes Colonel Dumbuya's tenure from that of leaders like Ibrahim Traoré in Burkina Faso? Mamadi Dumbuya has a past and present that connect it to France. Colonel Dumboya served in the French Legion for five years before assuming the presidency. He is also married to a French woman who serves in France's National Gendarmerie, intertwining his personal life with French institutional connections. Mamadi Dumbuya's past as a former French legionnaire and his marriage to a French woman in the National Gendarmerie significantly influence his leadership and decision-making in several ways. Yes, it all comes down to personal relations. Dumbuya's background as a former French legionnaire suggests a close connection to France, both professionally and personally. His service in the French military institution may have instilled values of loyalty and cooperation with France. The French Legion is known for its stringent training and discipline, which have shaped Dumbuya's leadership style and approach to governance. His experiences within the Legion likely fostered strong ties with France and its military establishment. Dumbuya's marriage to a French woman who serves in the National Gendarmerie, a French military branch involved in law enforcement and defense missions, further solidifies his ties to France. The familial connection to the French National Gendarmerie suggests a deep-rooted affiliation with France's security apparatus. Dumbuya's spouse may have insights or perspectives influencing his decision-making regarding security matters and international relations. Dumbuya's personal and familial ties to France may impact Guinea's diplomatic relations with France and other countries. His close association with France could facilitate communication and cooperation between the two nations on various issues, including security, trade, and development. Conversely, Dumbuya's ties to France may raise concerns about potential biases or conflicts of interest in Guinea's foreign policy decisions. Critics may question whether Dumbuya's allegiance lies more with France than with the interests of Guinea and its people. There is also some speculation about French involvement in Dumbuya's rise to power. Some experts speculate that France, with its historical ties to Guinea and regional interests, orchestrated or supported Dumbuya's coup. 
This speculation stems from France's past interventions in its former colonies and its influence over political developments in West Africa. The perception of French involvement in Dumbuya's rise to power led to suspicions about the extent of Guinea's sovereignty and independence. Critics question whether Dumbuya's presidency serves French interests rather than the interests of Guinea and its people. Speculations about French involvement in Guinea's political affairs contribute to perceptions of external interference and meddling in the country's internal affairs. This narrative portrays Guinea as vulnerable to foreign influence and manipulation, undermining its sovereignty and self-determination. The perception of foreign interference fuels distrust and skepticism toward Dumbuya's government, particularly among segments of the population wary of external actors' agendas. However, many experts suggest that the leader may be under pressure. Colonel Dumbuya occasionally voiced his frustrations despite these constraints, notably during a United Nations General Assembly speech. He highlighted the pressures exerted by Western powers to prioritize their interests over Guinea's sovereignty revealing the delicate balance he must maintain. He is now on the European Union's list of officials accused of human rights violations for doing this. And how does Dumbuya's inclusion on the European Union's list of officials accused of human rights violations impact his presidency and international relations? Being listed by the European Union for alleged human rights violations undermines Dumbuya's legitimacy and credibility as a leader both domestically and internationally. It tarnishes his reputation and casts doubt on his commitment to upholding human rights principles. Internationally, Dumbuya's presence on the EU's list isolates Guinea from the European Union and other international partners prioritizing human rights. This leads to diplomatic tensions and strained relations with EU member states and other countries with similar concerns about human rights violations. Dumbuya's inclusion on the EU's list may trigger sanctions or restrictions imposed by the European Union or individual member states. These measures could target Dumbuya personally and Guinea's government officials or institutions, further isolating the country and impeding its ability to engage with the international community. The allegations of human rights violations against Dumbuya and his government affect Guinea's eligibility for international aid and assistance programs. Donor countries and organizations may withhold or reduce funding in response to concerns about human rights abuses, hindering Guinea's development and capacity-building efforts. Dumbuya's inclusion on the EU's list also has legal and judicial ramifications, both domestically and internationally. It could lead to investigations by international bodies or courts into the alleged human rights violations, potentially resulting in legal proceedings and accountability measures. These challenges leave him helpless in front of France. They do anything they want to. But has he tried to resist? In what ways has Dumbuya attempted to assert Guinea's sovereignty despite external pressures, as evidenced by his speech at the United Nations General Assembly? As evidenced by his speech at the United Nations General Assembly, Dumbuya has attempted to assert Guinea's sovereignty in several ways despite external pressures. In his speech, Dumbuya acknowledged the external pressures faced by Guinea particularly from Western nations like France. He highlighted the challenges of balancing national interests with demands from powerful international actors, emphasizing the importance of sovereignty and self-determination. Dombuya criticized what he perceived as Western hypocrisy, pointing out discrepancies between Western rhetoric on democracy and human rights and their actions in the global arena. He questioned the sincerity of Western nations' commitment to democracy, and accused them of prioritizing their national interests over the well-being of African nations like Guinea. Dumbuya asserted Guinea's right to pursue its path of development and governance without undue interference from external actors. He emphasized the need for African nations to assert their sovereignty and resist external pressures, undermining their independence and autonomy. While defending Guinea's sovereignty, Dumbuya also called for international solidarity and cooperation based on mutual respect and equality. He emphasized the importance of dialogue and collaboration among nations to address common challenges and promote peace, stability, and development. Dumbuya explicitly rejected external interference in Guinea's internal affairs, reaffirming the country's commitment to self-governance and national sovereignty. He asserted Guinea's right to make independent decisions free from coercion or manipulation by foreign powers. But has he ever given unfair advantages to France under pressure? 
Dumbuya sought French military assistance to secure Guinea's northeastern border with Mali. This request indicates a willingness to collaborate with France on security matters, potentially enhancing France's regional strategic interests. Dumbuya aligns Guinea's security efforts with France's, fostering closer ties between the two countries' armed forces by soliciting French military support. Unlike some neighboring countries in the Sahel region, under Dumbuya's leadership, Guinea has not exhibited significant anti-French sentiment. While Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso have taken measures such as expelling French diplomats or criticizing French policies, Guinea has remained relatively calm in its relations with France. This absence of overt opposition suggests a lack of resistance to French influence or interference in Guinea's affairs. Dumbuya's administration has not openly criticized or opposed French regional intervention or policies. He did criticize the West, but never specifically, France. While other leaders such as Ibrahim Traore in Niger have been outspoken in their opposition to French influence, Dumbuya's government has maintained a more neutral or accommodating stance towards France. This lack of criticism or opposition may indirectly benefit France by reducing diplomatic tensions and facilitating cooperation between the two countries. How does France's control impact the locals of Guinea? French investments and ties with Guinea contribute to certain sectors' economic development and job creation. However, heavy reliance on French companies for investment and trade can also create economic dependencies, limiting diversification and sovereignty over economic policies. French cultural influence, including language, education, and media, can shape societal norms and values in Guinea. While exposure to the French language and culture can offer educational and professional opportunities, it also contributes to the erosion of local languages and traditions, impacting cultural identity. French involvement in Guinea's political affairs, whether through diplomatic relations or historical ties, can influence governance structures and decision-making processes. This manifests in political alignments, policy preferences, and the selection of political leaders, potentially undermining democratic processes and local autonomy. Collaboration with France on security matters, such as military training and counterterrorism efforts, enhances Guinea's security capabilities and addresses regional threats. However, it may compromise sovereignty and human rights, particularly if security cooperation increases military presence or intervention. French interests in Guinea's natural resources, such as bauxite, iron ore, and gold, drive resource extraction and exploitation. While this may generate revenue and infrastructure development, it can also contribute to environmental degradation, social inequalities, and the marginalization of local communities. French development assistance and aid programs may support infrastructure projects, healthcare initiatives, and education programs in Guinea. However, the terms and conditions attached to such aid and the prioritization of French interests can influence the effectiveness and sustainability of development efforts. Overall, external factors are not the only issues Dumbuya faces. There are also many internal challenges. And what are those? Guinea has a history of political instability, including coups, protests, and ethnic tensions. Dumbuya's leadership must navigate these dynamics to maintain stability and foster national unity. Corruption is pervasive within Guinea's government and institutions, hindering development, eroding public trust, and exacerbating inequality. To address these issues, Dumbuya must combat corruption and improve governance. Guinea faces economic challenges despite its rich natural resources, infrastructure development, and investment to stimulate growth and improve living standards. Social inequality and poverty are prevalent in Guinea, with disparities between urban and rural areas and among different ethnic groups. Dumbuya's administration must address these inequalities through social policies, poverty alleviation programs, and inclusive development strategies. Human rights abuses, including arbitrary arrests, restrictions on freedom of expression, and impunity for security forces, remain prevalent in Guinea. Dumbuya faces pressure to uphold human rights standards, ensure accountability, and protect civil liberties. Guinea's infrastructure is inadequate, particularly in transportation, healthcare, and education, limiting access to essential services for many citizens. Dumbuya must invest in infrastructure development and improve service delivery to meet the population's needs. 
Guinea's ethnic composition and regional disparities contribute to social and political tensions. Dumbuya must promote national cohesion, dialogue, and inclusivity to mitigate ethnic and regional divisions and prevent conflict. High rates of youth unemployment and inadequate educational opportunities pose significant challenges for Guinea's youth. To address these challenges and harness the potential of the youth population, Dumbuya must prioritize youth empowerment, skills development, and education reform. Is there any possible way to end the French's control of Guinea? Guinea could focus on building strong and transparent democratic institutions, including an independent judiciary, robust civil society organizations, and effective anti-corruption measures. Strengthening governance structures and accountability mechanisms can reduce susceptibility to external influence and empower local decision-making. Fostering a sense of national unity and inclusivity is crucial in reducing external vulnerabilities. Dumbuya's government could prioritize initiatives that bridge ethnic, regional, and socioeconomic divides, promoting a shared national identity and collective interests. By uniting the population, Guinea can better resist external pressures and assert its sovereignty. Guinea could pursue economic diversification and seek partnerships with various countries and international organizations. Guinea can increase its bargaining power and safeguard its economic sovereignty by reducing dependence on any external actor such as France. This may involve attracting investment from non-Western countries or strengthening regional economic integration efforts. Collaboration with neighboring countries and regional organizations can strengthen Guinea's position in regional dynamics and reduce vulnerability to external interference. By participating in regional initiatives and alliances, Guinea can leverage collective strength and advocate for common interests, including regional autonomy and sovereignty. Dumbuya's government could engage in diplomatic outreach to diversify international partnerships and reduce reliance on France. Building relationships with countries with similar values or interests and engaging with multilateral institutions can provide alternative avenues for support and collaboration. Additionally, diplomatic efforts could focus on advocating for Guinea's sovereignty and independence on the global stage. Civil society is crucial in holding governments accountable and advocating for citizen interests. Supporting civil society organizations, including human rights groups, media outlets, and grassroots movements, can empower citizens to demand transparency, accountability, and sovereignty from their government. A vibrant civil society can act as a resistance against external interference and promote national resilience. Do you think French control can end? What does the leader need to do to throw France out? Let us know in the comment section. Does he want to throw France out or is he a puppet himself? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.